Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part one of our six-part Ether Revolt full set review. Today we're going to look at the white cards as well as a couple multicolor cards that are in the set. Now, if you've watched our set reviews before, you probably know what to expect here, but typically we'll just look at every card, and first we'll kind of look at that card through the limited lens, and then any card that has power to potentially cross over into other formats, whether that be standard, commander, etc. We'll also talk about that a little bit. Having said that, there's a couple great ways to help support our channel and what we do. You can find those in the description below. There is a link to our Amazon affiliate store, for example, and through those links, you can make purchases, whether they be Ether Revolt products, other magic products, or really anything else. But if you do that, a small percentage of the purchase will come back to help support the channel. You'll also see links to our Patreon page down there, another great way to help support us and help us keep doing what we're doing. So that's always appreciated. Having said that, let's get into the cards. Our first card is Aerial Modification. Uh, not one of my favorites in the set here. Here's my issue with it. I'm not a big fan of auras that either don't protect themselves, protect the creature they're enchanting, or in some way replace themselves. And I especially don't like them when they're expensive and cost five. <laughs> I just don't want to be two for one. And I especially don't want to be two for one for a five casting cost spell, right? So here's my thought on this, though. It's very tempting sometimes to run this. I mean, I've been there. We've all been there. You get a card like this, and maybe you have one or two really great vehicles in your deck, and you just think to yourself, wow, if I could get this out on turn five, plus two, plus two, and flying to one of these vehicles, take away the crew cost, and get in for some serious damage, it just seems really good on paper. And yes, that could happen periodically, and there are some great vehicles that are in the set that we're going to look at. For example, there's one that costs one that's a 7-11 with a crew six. I mean... I'd be very tempted myself to run this card if I had that in my deck, right? But in the long run, you just have to think of it this way. The one time that that actually might work out for you, there'll probably be about six or seven times where either you don't get the cards in the right order, one of the cards doesn't show up at all, or else simply, worst case scenario, you put this on the creature or on the vehicle in this case and it gets destroyed. So you really want to avoid that, quite honestly. So this does look good sometimes. Be careful, though. It is very high risk for the reward. Next, we have Aeronaut Admiral. Uh, this is okay and limited. It's not super exciting. It does cost four, and you will find that there's a fair amount of four drops that you see here in white, especially. Uh, this one's a 3-1 flyer, so that's okay and limited. I like the fact that it does give vehicles that you control flying, so again, it's a lot better if you have a couple really good vehicles in your deck. i much rather play something like this in the previous card. Not only is it one mana cheaper, but it's also a flyer on its own, a 3-1. It's doing its own thing, and if you destroy this, it doesn't destroy any of your other stuff, right? So this is a much better choice, and it might not always make your build. It's going to depend if you have good targets for it, uh, but it's a fine card. It's going to be good in certain builds for sure. Ether Geode Miner. Okay, here's a card I really like. There's some really awesome two drops in this set, two and three drops. A lot of smaller creatures, but they all have some interesting abilities. This is a perfect example of that. So I'm paying two for three one. Yes, it's a little bit fragile. Yes, Shock is in the format and it could be destroyed really quick. <laughs> but what I like about it is when this attacks, you get two energy and then you can pay the two energy to flicker it. So here's what's awesome about this card. It's basically a free attack. So I play this on turn two. Starting on turn three, I can attack in no matter what is going on on my opponent's side of the board. And if they are weary about what I'm doing, maybe I got some mana untapped, maybe they saw some combat tricks in game one and they just are concerned that I may pull something crazy out, they have a decision to make to either go ahead and try to make a trade with you knowing if the trade's not going to be favorable for you, you can pull out of it, or if they just take the damage. So that puts them in a really strange spot, right? That's what I love about this card. So you just attack, and they're in a weird spot. If they go ahead and block, okay, no harm done. If I don't want the block to happen, I flicker it, and really, I lost nothing. Phenomenal. On top of that, that flicker effect also turns on Revolt, one of the major mechanics in this set. So this is a fantastic enabler for Revolt. So now it's my second main phase. 
Revolt is enabled, and who knows what other kind of shenanigans I can pull off. Great card. I think not only is this an awesome, awesome limited card, but this is going to be a card that will see some standard play, I have no doubt, especially in maybe an aggressive deck. There's already some good Boros aggressive decks out there, and they've actually been very strong in the meta. I could see sprinkling a card like this into those decks and just even making them better. It's that good. Ether Inspector, a uh, serviceable four drop in limited. It's not something that you always want or will always make your cut. This is actually part of a cycle and you get one in each color, but they all have those two abilities of when they enter the battlefield, you get two energy. And then when they attack, you can pay the two for a servo token. So this particular one has Vigilance, which isn't as good as some of the others. The black and red are probably the better ones of this cycle. But again, if you need a four drop, it's just fine. Airdrop Aeronauts. This one is a serviceable 5-drop for limited. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I mean, paying 5 for 4-3 flyer is just fine sometimes if you need the evasion. The Revolt Trigger is going to be good in certain matchups and maybe inconsequential in other ones. Uh, if this isn't in your main deck for some reason, I would probably board it in against a hyper-aggressive build. Maybe you come across a black-red aggro deck, then this becomes a little bit better. But yeah, it's just fine at the 5-spot in limited. Alley Evasion. I actually like this card quite a bit for limited. It's a nice dual purpose card. On one hand, it's a combat trick. Sometimes that will come in handy when it comes to attacking or blocking, but other times it's a card that will protect another creature that's important to you that's on the battlefield and let it come back to your hand. Or it just might simply be turning on Revolt, and there's a lot of great Revolt cards in this set. So this actually does a lot for one mana. And it's interesting because, especially in Kaladesh, if you're in white to begin with, you're going to be very creature heavy and you're not going to have a lot of space for instant sorceries, especially considering there's a lot of great vehicles out there that you might want to play too. So it kind of puts you in a position where you really have to kind of choose the best of the best. And because of that, sometimes cards like this end up in your sideboard, but that's okay. That's going to happen sometimes, but keep in mind though, if you have a lot of good revolt cards, this could be worth main decking. Audacious Infiltrator. Uh, this is a two drop. That's a three one. I always like these in white. Like you see these all the time in limited. They typically have some sort of clause that there's something that can't block them. In this case, it's artifact creatures, which is nice for servo tokens and stuff. So yeah, the two drop spot in your deck in limited is the most important spot. You really want this stacked with a lot of decent creatures. And this one is very, very good, I think, for two. And I'd be very happy to run it most of the time. Bastion Enforcer. Uh, this is a vanilla 3-2 for three, but I will say you don't see a lot of great three drops in blue. There's some really good two drops and some decent four drops, but a lot of times you might need to fill out your curve. And I think that's probably the main reason this card even exists is they found that they needed something that's serviceable at the three spot for limited. So there it is. If you need it, it's there. Call for Unity. Okay, here's one of the rares, and this one's interesting, if nothing else. I'm usually not a big fan of enchantments that come into the battlefield and don't necessarily do anything the turn you play them, and this is an example of that. Although, if you're able to trigger the revolt, even on the turn you play it, it will get a counter. Now, that counter doesn't get put on, though, until the end step, so even so, you're not really getting a benefit on the current turn. So that makes it feel just a little too slow for standard for me. There's there's so many great like ways to get plus one, plus one counters and anthem effects right now in standard that this is not going to be where you're going to look. I mean, Gideon's in the format, right? So really, this card is not going to make an impact there at all. I think this could be serviceable in certain limited decks. Again, you want to make sure you have a lot of creatures to back this up, and you want to make sure you have a lot of ways to trigger revolt. Now, it's limited. You'll probably have a lot of creatures. The revolt triggers, though, some decks are going to be a little better at that than others. If you feel confident that you're going to be able to consistently get those revolt triggers, then yeah, you know what? For five, I'd probably play this, but just be real sure of that because this card could be real bad if you can't trigger it. Next, we have Caught in the Brights, and I love pacifism effects in Limited. They are phenomenal. I don't mind paying three to pacify something any day of the week. Now, this one has a special tag on it that says when you do attack with a vehicle, you get to exile that creature, which is even better. So I'm very happy running this as pacifism, 
But there are times where pacifism doesn't get the job done, right? You have the creature with the activated ability, or in some cases, maybe that creature is even indestructible with a great activated ability or something like that. So this allows you to kind of get around that, even though, yes, it's super conditional. I mean, you do have to do a little work to make that happen, but at least you have the possibility of it happening as opposed to just a straightforward pacifism with no possibility of getting rid of the creature. So I do like this a lot. Very happy to run these in limited. Consulate Crackdown. Uh, this is a great sideboard card in a lot of places. This is phenomenal in limited. And again, I'm probably not starting this in my main deck. I want to see what my opponent's doing first, but there's going to be many times where you'll sideboard this in and be happy that it's there. <laughs> standard, yeah, this is going to be around in the standard sideboards, I think, for a lot of decks. Simply, Boros decks can run this. I mean, they're already playing white. It'd probably be really good, actually, in a vehicle's mirror matchup if I'm playing against another vehicle's deck. So, yeah, I have no doubt you're going to see this coming out of sideboards and standard. It's also cool in Commander because even though you don't know for sure your opponent's going to be running artifacts, but come on, it's Commander. There'll be plenty of targets for this, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is a great card there, too. Next, we have Conviction. This is an interesting one. It's a reprint from Stronghold. So they're going back a little ways on this one. And it does protect itself. I mean, you can pay one white, return this to its owner's hand. So hopefully you don't get the two for one. Having said that, it's not super exciting most of the time. I mean, giving something plus one, plus three, it's kind of nice if you want to gum up the board maybe. But I do think in a world where there's vehicles and there's removal spells you have to fit into your deck, that a lot of times this just isn't going to make it there. You're just not going to have room for it. And because of that, it will be relegated to the sideboard most of the time. But don't forget it's there. I mean, there are times where this could come in handy and limited. Countless Gears Renegade. Uh, this is another really cool two drop. I like this card a lot. It's a common, so there'll be a lot of these going around in a draft. But if you can get that revolt to trigger, then you got yourself 3-3 power toughness on the battlefield for two, and 1-1 one, one of that is also an artifact, which many times will matter. Very, very strong and limited. I would even fathom to say that I think this could see some standard play. It's actually that good to me. I just really like the economy behind it of the possible 3-3 three, three with an artifact to have already on your battlefield early on in the game. I think that could be strong. Next is Dawn Feather Eagle, really good card at the five drop spot for limited. Another common, so again, you'll see a few of these. Yes, a 3-3 flyer for five doesn't feel super good on paper, but I love the fact that for one turn, all your creatures get buffed and get vigilance, so you kind of get some free attacks in there. Very good for limited. Deadeye Harpooner. Another card that is going to be some relatively good white removal, and it's a creature to boot, which is nice. So even if I don't find an opportunity to play this as removal, at least it's doing something in my hand and not just sitting there. That's always nice. But this really feels more like a black card to me than a white card. You don't usually see this type of removal from white. White typically gets more of either the pacifism effects or the removal that affects something while it's attacking or blocking. So this is kind of a nice surprise, I think. I'd be happy to run this in limited. Next we have Decommission, and I like this card out of sideboards. As a matter of fact, in limited, I wouldn't mind main decking one of these because, let's face it, you're in Kaladesh, you know you're going to have a target for it at some point, right? But even so, bringing another one in from the sideboard or something like that against artifacts, heavy matchups is going to be really great for you. Also, in standard, I can see this coming out of sideboards in standard. You have to remember, Fragmatize is in the format. That's going to be the go-to spell to deal with problems right now in standard. But there are going to be certain things I have no doubt at some point that Fragmentize won't be able to deal with. So it's going to be nice to have maybe one or two of these in your board to deal with those threats. Death Dismissal. Uh, again, this is more of your standard white removal, if you will. It costs four, but I mean, it is doing a lot of stuff. Three damage, and you do get to divide it into up to three targets, which is kind of nice. So could potentially deal with like even three servo tokens or something like that at times. So yeah, I don't mind this one. It's not going to always make your cut. You may have some better removal, but if you need it, it's there for you. Next, we have Exquisite Archangel, and this one's a mythic. I actually like this card a lot. Uh, let's talk about Limited first. I mean, first off, the art's amazing. I do want to say that, but uh, this costs seven. It's going to be the higher end of your curve, but what's nice about it, it is a 5-5 five, five flyer, and then on top of it, you can't lose the game while it's in play. If you were to lose, instead, this gets exiled, and you go back to 20 life, <laughs> so it puts your opponent in this weird position where they really can't 
kill you uh, or else you're going to gain a whole bunch of life and it kind of resets things a little bit unless of course they need to get rid of the angel and that's really the only answer they have <laughs> so i guess that could come into play but i do think a lot of the time this will just gum up the board state your opponent won't want to finish you off they're going to be digging for an answer to the angel so when you build your deck you do want to consider that and maybe have some cards that work well in a very dense board state uh, maybe some direct damage or that type of thing that could get by for those last few points of damage so it's interesting there for sure now let's talk about standard for a moment it feels a little expensive for standard but in my mind i'm kind of thinking there's a lot of good ramp spells out there right now and this set has brought some really strong ramp not only spells but combos out and we'll see those as we continue on through the week and i kind of wonder if there wouldn't be like a selesnia deck out there that is trying to cast emrakul like most decks right <laughs> and this could be maybe like a speed bump along the way that could be kind of interesting so i don't know this potentially might see some standard play we'll have to kind of see if that type of archetype can make it in the meta but i wouldn't be shocked i will say that also really interesting card again for commander now granted multiplayer games there's going to be more people that could be at the table with an answer for this but if you played this later when you're down to the last couple opponents could be pretty powerful so again it might slow the game down you want to take that into consideration even in commander uh, but interesting play for sure Felidar Guardian. Uh, this is a nice flicker effect for limited. So if maybe you have some decent fabricate cards from the Kaladesh packs in your deck, or probably more likely some good revolt cards, and this will be fantastic for you. It's a nice blocker too. Gums up the board a little bit. So yeah, I'm happy to play this. And yet another decent four drop. Kirapur Osprey. Uh, this is another good three drop for you. Uh, this is basically Wild Griffin and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a fine card. And those Windrake cards, I always like in Limited. I'm happy to play them. This one, no no different. And like I said, you might be a little hard-pressed sometimes to find some good three-drop creatures in white in this set. So here's another one for you. Restoration Specialist, another good two-drop. This one's a two-one. And what I like about this is you just pay one to sacrifice it. And potentially, you're returning one or maybe even two cards from your graveyard to your hand seems very, very economical, right? Now, granted, early in the game, you might not have targets or maybe you only have one target, not two for this. But you know what? That's still okay because this is also a way to turn on Revolt. So I really like that versatility in this card. I think this is a phenomenal two drop, actually. Next, we have Solemn Recruit. And I don't know, I always feel like these double strike creatures should be better than they are in limited for me. But uh, this one, my biggest complaint about it is it's a little too fragile as a 2-2. And yes, you can get it bigger with the revolt trigger, but it doesn't take effect until the end step. So I play this and notice it is two on color. So a lot of times this won't be a three drop, but it will be more like a four drop. I go ahead and play the card. It's a good card as a 2-2 double striker. I'm happy with it at this point. But there's a lot of time there before I can do something to make this larger and my opponent has the opportunity to answer it, basically. And that could be with a shock or with something else, but it just seems like there's a lot of ways to get rid of this card. Having said that, I mean, I would still play it because if your opponent doesn't have an answer for it, it's a good card. And the longer it stays on the battlefield, the stronger it can get. It's especially good with green because green has a lot of ways to add counters to things. So if you can start adding some counters, hitting some revolt triggers, this card could actually become really good for you in limited. Just keep in mind, this shouldn't be like your big win condition in your deck, right? Because sometimes this isn't going to do anything. When it works though, it's going to work wonderfully. Sram so Senior Edificer. Uh, this is another amazing two drop. I've been talking about these great two drops all day. Here's another one. A 2-2 two, two for two that whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle, you get to draw a card. Like, what? That's awesome, right? Now, you could argue that in limited, this is maybe not as good as some other formats because, I mean, most limited decks, you might be running, say, on an average of, what, two vehicles and maybe one aura, maybe one equipment, if that. So there's not going to be a ton of targets to get value out of this. But you know what? You only pay two for it. So if you draw one card off of it during its time on the battlefield... That's huge value for two mana. I'm very happy to have that, right? So it's also legendary, which is interesting because a couple points. 
in standard, that's a downside because you may want to sprinkle a few of these into a deck, and of course you can't have two in play at the same time. But in commander, that's a positive because if you wanted to, this could be a very serviceable dwarf commander with a lot of maybe equipments and vehicle spells in your deck to back it up. That's actually pretty interesting, right? So having said that, I do think this will see standard play. I think this is something you could probably sprinkle into the vehicles deck as it is. I wouldn't worry about the legendary clause too much because this thing will be a lightning rod. <laughs> Opponents who know better will know they have to get rid of this or they're going to lose the card advantage. So if you draw another one, it's probably not going to be too long before you're going to get an opportunity to play it, right? Uh, so yeah, overall, really cool card. I'm really excited about all these legendary creatures. There's a cycle of them, one in each color, and of course this is the first one we're seeing, but they all seem a lot of fun. All right, speaking of cycles, here's a great cycle. This is the Expertise cycle, and here's SRAM's Expertise. And... This is, out of all of the expertises, maybe not as exciting as some, but you're still playing a spell for free. That's awesome, right? And that's what they all do. Uh, they all give you an opportunity to play a free spell, as long as you have one that meets the requirement in your hand. Uh, this one also gives you three servo tokens, which actually could come into play and be very important. There's a lot of artifacts matter stuff going on. So as far as limited goes, yeah, no brainer, play this. It's going to be awesome for you. I mean, the servo tokens are good enough in limited and the fact that you most of the time, hopefully will be able to cast a free spell. Phenomenal. I mean, you could be getting up to seven points of efficiency out of a four mana spell. Awesome stuff. Uh, this will see play in standard. I, I actually think all of the expertises will see play in standard and really probably the whole time that they're in standard, quite honestly. They are all phenomenal. Casting free spells, who knew, turned out to be a good thing in the past in Magic. <laughs> I think it's going to be a good thing in the future in Magic, too. Uh, maybe even too good. These cards seem really pushed. So, uh, yeah, not too much more I can say about it. Great card, play it. Thopter Arrest, a very good removal spell. It does hit either an artifact or a creature, which is kind of nice. Now, it is an opponent's creature or artifact so you can't do any sort of shenanigans to your own stuff like some other cards that you do but that's okay most of the time you're just hitting an opponent's stuff with it anyway uh, this will be great to run in limited and i do think this will see some play if nothing else out of sideboards and standard here and there uh, i think it overall will be a good card it is interesting though some of these enchantment removal spells though you do want to keep in mind because of the artifact hate people are running most of the artifact hate also can hit enchantments, <laughs> so you do want to keep that in mind. It's not going to be as strong as maybe Oblivion Ring was back in its day or something like that, uh, but it's still going to be really good for you. All right, let's look at the Lone Azorius card in the set. This is Spire Patrol. Uh, this is an okay limited card. I mean, nothing super exciting here. I'm paying four, two different colors. I'm getting a 3-2 flyer. I get to tap something down for an extra turn. That's nice. It's a nice little tempo play, but the fragility of this card is its real weakness, right? Like, again, it's in shock range. It's just really easy to get rid of. Um, I, I'm probably still running it, though, as long as I have room in my deck for another 4-drop. It's not bad. I don't know. I wouldn't have mind paying 5 for this if it had Hexproof. I feel like that's actually a much better card than what we're seeing here. But uh, it is what it is, and, yeah, there'll be times so you'll run it. You'll be happy with it. And the last card we're going to look at today is the Lone Orzov card. It's Hidden Stockpile. And this one's intriguing to me because I said earlier I don't like enchantments that come into play and don't do anything right away. And I guess this falls under that category. But it only costs two. And when you hit the Revolt Trigger, which you could do the turn it comes into play, you get the Servo Token. But what's really interesting for me here is at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, you get to create a servo token, but then you can sacrifice a creature and pay one to scry one. So if you play your cards right, no pun intended, you can actually get into a situation where you're just simply scrying with this every turn for one. That actually seems good enough a lot of times. Scrying is a very good effect, and I would be happy to play this unlimited, actually. I don't mind this taking up one of my spots that's a non-creature spot. I'd really like to try it out if I'm in these colors and I feel confident that I'll be able to cast this. Again, it's probably not really a two drop, especially in limited. It's probably more like a three or four drop, but I still think, especially for a long grindy game, that scry effect could be really good. And also just building up some tokens could be really good too. It just helps you maybe get around some board states that are just stalled out, right? So yeah, I don't know. Standard... 
I, I'm not sure what deck would play this. And right now, Orzov, I don't know if they're going to be able to hang with some of the other combinations that are currently out there. I guess time will tell. But in the long run, especially as the format changes with the next couple sets, I think the power level is there. I think this could see some standard play at some point. Just not really sure where it fits at this point. Having said that... Those are all the white cards, as well as the Azorius and Orzov cards. So we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to look at all the blue cards and a few of the multicolor cards like we did today. And we'll keep going through the week, and we'll get through this whole set, and hopefully get you ready for that pre-release on Friday night or Saturday or Sunday, whenever you go. So until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.